Car IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted as always to be joined by my good mate, the mighty Celt himself, Tyro McKenna. Ty, what's happening, brother? I think the last time I saw you was Dubai back in March, April, I believe, man. So how's things? I'm all good. Just uh, training hard, getting skinny. The usual, the, the, the life of a boxer. Born life. Exactly, a born life. But what I'm going to say is uh, I've seen that you, you married a good lady, so congratulations on that. Yeah, uh, it, it only took me 15 years, but sure. 15 years. It Listen, you got it done, mate. You got it done. That's the main thing. And the honeymoon looked amazing as well, so. Ah, uh, unbelievable. Good stuff, good I stuff. I, I think it's half the reason why I'm wilder with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always a reason to move up in weight. And uh, uh, like I said, one four seven pounds, that, that extra seven pounds, that extra half a stone, and that's going to mean everything to you. Is it, was it hard getting down to that 140 pound, or was it just the right yeah, time? Yeah, so, like, after the hard Davies, no, sorry, after the, the Falls Park last year, I was thinking about moving up, and I was, I was debating with my, with my nutritionist whether we should, we should move up and we're going to, and then I got that opportunity to fight Regress Progre, and I said, you know what, that's too big an opportunity to say no. So, I killed myself, once again, I made 140, and the week of the fight, I was fucked. I was, I was on in the bay, so the heat helped, but like I was, uh, it was hard to make a weight. And after that, they just said, you know what, move up again. I was going to, I, I had, I had plans. I actually got a, asked. I got a phone call from Jamie saying, "Here, join a fight for the the IBO title against the guy that beat Sam Maxwell." I was like, fuck me, that's another good opportunity. Mm-hmm. The can't say no. So I was like, yep, fair enough. I'll do 140. I started this camp in the mainframe that I'm doing 140 again. And I was depressed every day. I was like, fuck, <laughs> looking at the scale going, I hate it. boxing. It's fucking doing my head in. Weight's doing my head in. I'm just grumpy all the time. And then that fight fell through. And I said, as soon as it fell through, I said, Jimmy, give me a 147 because... I need to do 147. I have to move up. Um, it's too much for me now. And since then, I've been happy training. I've been I've been back loving boxing. I'm I'm like, see when you're struggling to make weight, it's just all 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 camp is is being depressed about waiting and worrying about waiting. I have to lose two kilo in this session or a kilo this session. What I have to lose now? What did I put on there now? And now I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm Focusing on boxing just and, and enjoying boxing again. Yeah, uh, that, that's 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 the thing. People, we've heard it a few times from fighters that have moved up in weight that they're happier. They something sometimes they say they should have done it earlier, but the opportunity, like you said, the opportunity to face so, something like Regis or somebody else was was too good. But I just going back to Dubai because I didn't get a chance to talk to you after him, and you, you faced Regis in the uh, ring. You know what, Andy? I noticed it. I get beat, and then and then there's no there's no AFL. Where's for was AFL? Hey, listen, I I was there. I was waiting at the back for you. You didn't come back. You never came back to see uh, me. I was standing in that no. tent waiting for you, and nobody came back. I was I was getting the worst doctor's treatment I've ever seen oh, in my life. Mate, them big them big plasters like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, yeah. like that stuck to your head like that. <laughs> uh, I so. How good is we just then? You shared the ring with them, and I, I believe I got yeah. a little clip of you two. I didn't get an interview with you. I got a, both of you together. Yeah. Um, he, said he, he hits like fuck. Was your word? He does. He's, he is lethal. Like you could see just from his, from his, the get go, he's so relaxed in the ring. Like it was the calmness in his face during the fight. I was like, you know what? This guy is he's elite, and he's he's just relaxed. He's skillful. He's he's unbelievable. Came and his punch power is frightening. Uh, he is lethal, uh, but to be honest, I still to this day don't think it should have been stopped because of that cut. Because I was running down the set, it looked bad. Like when I look back on it, it looked bad because there's loads of blood there, but it was from a wee tiny cut mm. of the side of my eye. And I've had that, uh, I cut open the refate. So for to get staff for that was a bit ridiculous. I thought, and I thought the, the fifth round, I think it was. I uh, had a good fifth round, and then the second round was going okay, and I think it was getting into a nice wee fight that I was enjoying. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it took his biggest punches the first four rounds. I said what he was going to do. He was going to take his biggest punches, he was going to laugh, and he was kept going to keep on coming forward, and that's exactly what it did. And then when it started getting into a, a fight I was enjoying, it just got stopped over a pointless cut. But, oh, well, do you know what? He is unbelievable. So I was... 
honoured to share the ring with Definitely. Listen, and I agree with you. I, I said that ringside. I said, what are they doing, man? Why is that stopped? Like, he cuts every... If anything, let his corner have a look at another look at it. Do you know what I mean? That's I what... know, that's a really good... I, I pay a cut, man, for a reason, and I didn't even let him have his fucking opportunity to stop the cut, and he would have, because he's a good cut, man. Yeah. So that, that annoyed me as well. Like, just give it the one round to see if he can stop a cut, and he would have, because it was tiny. Mm. Like, after the fight, they were just going to put dumbbells on it instead of a stitch. That's how shit it was. <laughs> oh, well. But listen, big fight coming out ahead at the Fela, man. I'm, it's, it means a lot to these Irish fighters fighting on the Fela, especially Belfast boy in Belfast. Uh, new weight against a tough Welshman in Chris Jenkins. New chapter in your, your professional game, so in your professional uh, career. So, I mean, talk to me about Chris Jenkins and how tough a task this will be on August 6th. Yeah, do you know what? See Chris Jenkins. He's a tough man that always, always brings a good fight. Like I haven't seen him in a fight where he does he hasn't he hasn't offered and he isn't he isn't going for the win. Mm-hmm. Uh he's gonna come, he's gonna come for he always comes in exciting fights as well. So he's gonna come and he's gonna bring a what I believe as a he's gonna he's gonna mm-hmm. come out and he's gonna come fire and he's 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 not gonna be shit gun shy and it's gonna be an exciting fight for how long it lasts. Um He's, in, he's, a, he's a fitter that I actually like watching box. Um, I've watched him against Paddy Gall, Phil Stuck Club, both of them, Irish guys, and uh, he came and he brought the, brought the, brought the fire. Mm-hmm. And they're both at the same fit, so I'm expecting nothing less but a, but a tough fight from him. He did fight the Fela a good few years ago against uh, Paddy Gallagher, didn't he? And it was obviously controversial circumstances, I believe, the fight was, was stopped. So he's probably wanted to come back to Belfast and show the the Irish fans that it, that wasn't he can fight and he's going to probably want to come and give it his be, his all against somebody like especially you who's all action. So are you expecting the best, Chris Jenkins? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Um, I mean, he always he always turns up and he always has has. He, I've never seen him get beat up put it, put it that way. He's always put in a good performance. Even his last fight where he, he got he did get knocked out, he was probably winning that fight. So. Like he does always put in a good performance, and I expect nothing less. I think he's going to come out, and I think he's going to come out all guns blazing in the first four or five rounds. But I think my, especially seeing him in 140, people know me as high pace and, and a high work rate and, and, and stuff like that. But see, if you watch me spawn, I have double the pace and double the work rate that I do in a fit. And I, I put that down to feeling a bit not as energetic when I get down to 140 and, and, and something's a bit missing. So I think at 147, you'll see a real, a real how high a PSI do you actually go in sparring. So I think that's going to get them in the later rounds. You, you mentioned his last fight, Chris, and just to say that even though he did get stopped, man, he got hurt badly, but he never took a knee. He tried to stay on his feet the whole time. It's yeah. like he's got balls of steel like yourself. So this is going to be a crack. Yeah, you know what? We're we're very similar, me and him. Like he, he cuts he cuts when you look mm-hmm. at him as well. So it's gonna be hopefully we get past the four, the four, first four rounds. <laughs> <laughs> but cuts, but uh, but yeah, like he's very similar to me. He always comes. He always brings his game as a badger. Um, he doesn't take knees when when he when he probably shoot. And uh, and he and he loves the war. He loves ex- exciting the fans and and uh, he loves blood being all over his face. So as uh, the eyes was. It's going to be an exciting fight. And I know for a fact it's going to be an exciting fight. Um, but it's definitely a fight that I believe I'm going to win. Yeah, it's good. you know me, Ty. Anytime you fight, I'm, I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat watching you fight anyway, mate. I, I absolutely love what, enjoy watching you. But again, what you and Chris are probably going to have to do here, you're probably going to have to sit the ringside doctor and the referee down and say, listen, <laughs> both of you, you and Chris are going to say, listen, guys, right, we both cut. Right, we've got scar tissue all over our eyes. Just let us fight. Like, don't stop none yeah. of us. Just let it go. Yeah, like, have you, like, you should be able to say to the doctor before you go to fight, I do not give a fuck about cuts. I know. Like, see, if there's, see if there's a cut right down. I don't want it to stop. Just don't stop it. I don't give a fuck. Uh, but no, doctors are sometimes a bit too worried, I think. And, uh, but see, Belfast doctors, Martin Duffy and whatnot, they're actually very, very, very good. Um, they try and let the fight go as much as possible. I mean, my last fight in the field, I had the same cut that the Pro Grey fight got stopped for and a bigger one above it, and it didn't get stopped. So the, the Belfast 
doctors know what they're doing and are very lenient towards the cuts. So, thankfully. I mean, it's a, it's a tasty division you're, you're entering. And Florian Mark, who, who's there, that's another good fight for you. I mean, Conor Ben is there. He's always... I know we're talking about the Chris Eubank Jr. I'm going to get your thoughts on that, but he's looking for a credible opponent at 147. You've got Chris Jenkins. You've got Michael McKinson. You've got uh, Chris mm-hmm. Congo. Uh, that's just the here in the UK is, uh, in itself, man. So, and, and you know what I mean? It's a tough old division. And I'm not going to talk about world level yet, but yourself with Spence and Crawford and all them guys. But, you know, it's a tough <laughs> division. It's, it's a, it's a very tough... Well, listen, listen, get past see, Chris see Jenkins I, first. Did you see when I... Um... <laughs> I, I, obviously, I was 140, and I, I wasn't really ever paying attention to who's at 147 and, and whatnot. And, and I moved up to this weight, and I went, fuck it all, I'll see who's top 15 in the world. And every single person was more or less a big name. And I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? It's, it's weight is stacked. In 140, there's about six or seven people that you go, fuck their big names. Yeah. This weight division, there's fucking loads of them. And, you and I was like, I got excited. I was like, I have a long list to call out here on Twitter. <laughs> but uh, Call them out now. But yeah, I mean, what? I said, call them out now on IFL. <laughs> All of them. <that>, obviously, <laughs> obviously, I'm focused on Chris Jenkins at the minute, but there's, like, Connor Ben, I'd love to fit. I mean, he's all, I love watching him. He's all action. He he, he hits hard. He's, he's fun to watch. And that's the kind of fights that I always want to be involved in is ones that are fun to watch for the fans. That's, one hundred percent. I'd love uh, the Mark who won. He's all action. I'd love to fight him. Um, I mean, I beat him. I'm, I'm definitely calling him out. I've already called him out a few times, I think. But, uh, but yeah, there's loads. There's loads, and then world levels just mental. There's so many. There's a fucking long list I can, I can name. Um, but yeah, let's get through Chris Jenkins first. Exactly, mate. Get, it's a tough old fight. Like you know, Chris. Well, you obviously seen him fight, and I know him very well. It's a tough fight. But you mentioned Chris. You uh, you mentioned uh, Conor Ben there. Uh, he's looking to move up weight, and if you believe the stories out in the papers right now and on the radio and and, and whatnot, a uh, possible huge fight, a legacy fight. They're calling it against the uh, Chris Eubank Jr. Now you've got Conor Ben, Chris Eubank Jr. It was all. It would almost be twenty nine years to the day that their fathers fought each other. I mean, that's just ridiculous. But your thoughts on that fight, if it goes ahead? And... Do you know what? See, you always say, oh, he's a spit of his dad. The both of them are exactly alike of their, their dads. Like, the way they act, the way they talk, the way they, they represent themselves, the way they box, everything is a carbon copy of their dads. It's fucking frightening. So... It's it's unreal to see that there's going to be a Connor Ben and and Chris Eubank Jr. Uh, fight. Um, I, I actually think everyone everyone's saying and I was saying as well for a play of Connor Connor Ben moving up with the or a couple of ways to fight Chris Eubank, but for folks the Chris Eubank going to drain himself to the bollocks because that's probably worse than moving up with. I'd rather be at the wrong weight above than who it's blown the way it should be because he's going to be proper fucked at that weight. So mm-hmm. it's interesting. That I'm actually surprised he took it that late. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a huge, huge fight. It's, I, I, I'm very excited for them all for them. I'm definitely tuning in for that fight. And uh, the build-up. The build-up's going to be lethal as well. I know. You, if you, if it, it's anything like what their dad used to get up to, then it's uh, going to be... It's going to be amazing. It's going to be lethal. I could see the two dads going at it and everything. It's going to be lethal. That, that, who knows? Listen, I don't know. They're probably a little bit older and wiser now, but I, I kind of selfishly would like to see them dads go, just for one more time going at each other. Maybe, maybe we'll on the card uh, exhibition fate, them two. Listen, if it happens, <laughs> then we can thank you. Stranger things have happened than that. Exactly. Exactly, Ty. Exactly. Listen, Big, big, big fight for yourself. Like you mentioned that you love the Conor ben, ben fight, Florian Marku, but you're not looking past Chris Jenkins. So August six, have you got a message for Chris Jenkins? And what did the Belfast? What can the Belfast fans expect from yourself? War, brutality, blood, excitement. They don't want to miss it. Uh, I, I believe that's Chris Jenkins is thinking the same. That's exactly what we're we're going to do. I, in my training sessions, my sparring sessions are non-stop. I'm I'm 
Rome punches until the keel over after the sparring because I know what I'm going in for. I'm going in for a non-stop war, just like last fella. Um, it's going to be the exact same. Um, and then, did I tell you, did I, well, I don't know if you know, but I applied for your job recently. <laughs> did, did you My not job. see the video? No, yes, this, I, no, this, I, was not... an job. I applied for it. It was a great wee video I done. And I don't know, it didn't hit the waves. I didn't, I didn't get the, the, the interview date for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, let, let, let me have a look, man. Let me see what I can do, any, any strings <laughs> I can throw and all that. So I, I've not seen the video. I want, to be fair, I'm going to have a message for now. I want to see that video. I want to see your... Yeah, your... The, video, the video was good. It was spur of the moment, but it was pretty good. I, I, I was like, do you know what? I'm a shoe for this. And then uh, <laughs> Coogan said uh, that, uh, yeah, the interview is uh, in 2042 or something like that. <laughs> oh, you'll be long retired by then like retired retired <laughs> you'll be sitting with a pint of Guinness in your hand somewhere yeah, well that's true <laughs> listen Ty um, thanks again for, for doing this Fightful TV maybe one day you'll interview me if you get the job um, yeah. but until then mate listen August 6th I can't wait. You, put, you, you put it up uh, you're just waiting on a fight Dave. you're raring to go I'm raring to go I've seen it. a picture a picture of you in like boxing gloves where, where yeah. was that that was a little a little fight, a little charity fight I had. Yeah, when when's the next one? I don't know, man. That was like I only got like three days notice, man. That next one let me train for a little bit. Let me get a six you're, pack. You're ready to go. Anywhere, anytime, Andy. Ah, anywhere, anytime. But I want listen, I'm fat, man. I want to at least get a six pack. I want to look good. <laughs> you know, I want to be a fat yeah. mess in that ring. It's horrible, man. Ah, fuck it here. Plenty of time for six packs after the fight. Exactly, mate. Ah, exactly. The real six packs. That's in time, man. Stick in, my man, and uh, I'll speak to you soon, brother. Yep. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Act. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.